So welcome to the Bob Question Management Autobots of Faden Liambotis. Faden Liambotis. And please, if you want to discuss, please come here, because if you see the, the hall is full, so it would be nice that I don't need to run around. So if you want to discuss, please come near. Thank you very much. Okay, welcome. So we're not very few uh, very people, many people, so let's just talk about it uh, for a few minutes and and maybe they enjoy the key signing. Um, so how many of you use some kind of configuration monitoring system, Puppet, Chef, something like that? OK. And w what do you use? Let's just Puppet, OK? Everyone uses Puppet? Anyone else using Chef or something else? OK. So I've opened a Gobi document if you want to take notes there. Um, <clears throat> CFGM and MGMT. Okay, so um, how big is your uh, puppet manifest? In my case, it's about 10, 12 machines, I'm not entirely sure, something like that. Uh, In my case, about 10 to 12 machines, I'm not entirely sure, but it's okay. a better range. Um, okay, uh, from my side, I, I use puppet both at work at the Wikimedia Foundation and at SDSA. Um, I usually manage like uh, a lot of machines. At Wikimedia we have around 800 servers all running Puppet and all of them managing exclusively the um, configuration of, of um, servers. So there's a different parting. Uh, many people use Puppet to manage ev all aspects of the system so it can be re reinstalled um, and with about to run, run everything, while others just do the basic configuration and then do manual things. And both of those sites have pros and cons. <laughs> Fine. Um, you were saying, because I was opening the document Fine. here, um, what we use is mainly, well, we have several servers that uh, are used for doing computations on, uh, and they are mostly used for, uh, well, mostly completely configured with Puppet. Um, there's some others that are file servers and they're just a few minor things. They're not entirely done there. OK. Anyone else? Want to join up? Does that mean that the Wikimedia Foundation, it's completely stateless what's on the machine itself, yeah. so you, okay, so. So when we do want to do an upgrade, we just PXC boot the machine and provision it with a new. We're doing everything from everything, scratch. Everything, okay. So um, a challenge has been um, what to do with private data. So for example, we, we roll out certificates using Puppet as well. So um, the Git repo is public, so we also have a private repo that's being mixed into the same puppet manifest as to be able to include private stuff. How do you actually limit it so that each client can only retrieve no. what's this? Not at all. It's, uh, it's the typical server um, setup. So it, we don't do local uh, puppet. Like many people do local puppet, like they check out the Git tree and they puppet apply locally instead of running a Puppet Master, because the Puppet Master doesn't really scale up. Anyone does here does it? And what's your solution to this, that it doesn't scale? Yeah, many people do um, git checkouts on all of the servers, and then run Puppet locally. The other thing that doesn't scale up is uh, external resources, so basically everything that touches the database. If you don't use external resources much, then kind of scale it up. So we have a single machine at Wikimedia, for example, as a Puppet Master. That handles all servers. Yeah. OK. Uh, what, what are the challenges that you're facing? facing? Um, like. Well, it's a mix of several things. We have. Um, 
we have Debian machines and Red Hat machines and CentOS machines and several versions. And getting that into sync is the most difficult issue that I have right now. Um, but other than that, it seems to just work for me. All right. Um. I think with the advent of other tools, I mean, Puppet was there pretty early. Do you know if there's an advantage of using Chef? I, I didn't get that. Okay, sorry. Um, there's not only Puppet, there's also Chef. Right. Puppet was there pretty early, so most people, I guess, pick Puppet on the grounds of being early. Do you know if there are advantages using Chef? Um, I I know that Chef has a syntax in Ruby, which is a good thing for stacks running on Ruby on Rails and so on. Uh, nowadays, Puppet supports that. You can write manifest in Ruby. You just create a manifest that ends in .rb instead of .pp, and you can use a special syntax and write something in Ruby. Um, I, think Puppet, uh, I think Chef scales better, but I'm not really sure. I've never used it. This is what I've heard. Uh, Puppet has a very good collection of ready modules that you could reuse. I'm not doing that a lot. Uh, many people do. They even have an app get like tool where you can do Puppet module, install something, and it fetches it from the internet and executes it, which is a bit scary. Uh, I'm not sure if you're use reusing existing modules or writing your own. Your own. Yeah, I, I, I mostly do that. But. I have written a few modules myself, mainly um, modules that would detect which local hardware we're running, which particular server, and then depending on that, pull in the right uh, extra thing so we could install the local hardware support packages. But other than that, I don't really use modules. We just use a plain... Plain manifests. Sorry? Plain manifests. Not yeah, yeah it's me. Okay. Um, personally, I copied heavily from DSA's Puppet. You what? From DSA's Puppet repository. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that's a bit annoying with modules, I think, is that if you declare a package, that in the whole chain for one machine, it may only appear once. So that requires touching the modules, introducing another layer of abstractions so that you don't double include packages, which is a bit silly if you're setting it to the same value anyway. Uh, there's a solution to that, but it's not very clean. You can do, if not defined package, then define the package, basically. Thank you. But that's not very clean. <laughs> uh, but this could work in such scenarios when you have multiple things trying to do the same thing. Uh, but it gets repetitive after a while. You can do if, de if not defined for everything, basically, so you, you get the whole. Um, so. What was your expectation from the audience? Um, talking about problems and learning about solutions, basically. There's not a very large audience, though. So. Do you use anything else than Puppet, like um, Collective? Um, no? S some remote execution stuff, like Fabric, Salt, all that? Maybe you want to sit here and... <laughs> I'm going to sit next to you. <laughs> So we do use uh, shared resources so that um, uh, with the database setup, it, it's a bit of work, but it's fairly useful once it works. Use what? First. So the, the um, distributed resources thing, mm -hmm. where resources are stored in the database, mm -hmm. um, it is useful in that it allows me to uh, to generate uh, uh, what's it called um, nodules config files. Um, so I can just say, if this server has that, then define that shared Nudges thing, and automatically a Nudges config file 
is uh, modified and not just restored, so it's already there. And I don't have to do much. So the Naginator stuff in Puppet, this is how yeah, yeah. it's really, really stupidly implemented. Yeah, but it works. Up to uh, like 50 machines, maybe, something like that. So the problem is that instead of trying to t instantiate them in a file, they're having a single file, and then every time you define one such resource, it tries to scan the whole file to find if it's there, and if it isn't, to add it. When you have a large file of services, for example, it, there, that it takes does, a, it does It does have the ability to specify in which file to do that. But then yes, you but can't remove it. then um, some things don't, don't work. I don't remember which ones. Well, in my case, it's right, not, you can't it, do I understand the problem. In my case, it's not an issue because, I, like I said, I only have like 12 machines or right. something. So. So there's um, there's something in the Puppet tree, not in Debian, which is called Nagjin. Uh, it's a gross hack. It doesn't work as it is. I've modified it to make it work. Uh, so it's in Wikimedia's repo. Um, it's a thing that connects to the database and dumps all the resources and then creates them on the file as a file. It's it's a gross hack. Yeah, but, that's what I was about to say. But it. When you have like thousands of resources of services, like um, Puppet would take around an hour to run the complete complete cycle, <laughs> an hour of like 100% CPU and that is right, too. That, that's pretty bad. Yeah, and of course, running it once wouldn't even be sufficient, right? Or do you have it so that everything will work on the first try? So, yeah, why wouldn't it work in the first try? I think I had it that it stored some information on the Puppet Master and only retrieved it when it comes back. I mean, it's obviously the case for SSH keys, for which I also use it, but so in the first run it stores it in the database, and only in the second run it really fetches it again. But yeah, it happens. Things like that yeah, it happens. happens for a bit, yeah. So, yeah, on the Nagios thing, I had it with my previous job as well, which was much smaller than Wikimedia, and it was still, like, it couldn't scale. It was, it had, like, 4,000 services, and it was taking, like, half an hour or something like that. Um, okay. Anyone want to put a subject on the table? Do you know if the scaling issues are worked on upstream? I think upstream is working on it. Um, I think they're selling a product that's called Puppet Enterprise, which is supposed to scale. <laughs> well, if you use the, the standard default, the standard Puppet Master, then you're running <coughs> some special, like, default <coughs> built-in web server thing. But you can also go to some other solutions there, which supposedly would scale better. I don't know how much of this is true. I've never tried it, but there's one of the, one of the options is that you run it, that you run Ruby in an Apache module. Oh yeah, Apache. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that helps. Yeah, it helps a lot. Um, or Mongrels, but the, the default WebRig installation really doesn't scale more than 20 machines at most. Um, Apache works better. Yeah, it's much more efficient and multiple Mongrels. Like uh, I used to run like eight Mongrels at one point, and then having Nginx load balance across them, this also kind of scales. Um, what they're working on uh, upstream is uh, they're working on a, a replacement for the um, database stuff. So now they, now they have this thing that connects with Rails to a database, and it didn't scale, so they added a queue layer, public QD, to, 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 to queue updates, and this didn't scale either. So now they've written an alternative to PuppetDB, which is a Java thing. <laughs> Uh, that uses HSQLDB or something. Uh, no, I think it's in Clojure, actually. Written in Clojure, I think. Yeah. So it's pretty bad. With a JVM. I don't know. Um, so this is the, the biggest bottleneck, in my opinion, like the database. That's why many people don't use it. So this is Guy on IRC saying, and also in Gobi, um, uh, that there's something called Ansible, which. I Never heard would, of it. I've never heard of it myself. Um, but it would be faster to get started. 
uh, although it's not as mature as Puppet, that's what he wrote in, in Gobby. Um, and that's what he said on IRC. Um, I don't know, maybe we should ask him. This is gonna be weird. I don't know, uh, I don't know about it, so, but it's might be used to, useful to mention if it's uh, indeed useful, I don't know. Okay. Apparently it's based on lots of small YAML files. Okay. Isn't that what uh, Puppet does as well? Uh, Puppet uses, yeah, YAML and PSON and whatever. I've heard of another alternative, or we're, we're evaluating if we're going to use it. Um, it's called SALT. What? SALT, S-A-L-T. SALTstack.org. So this is, um, this is a mix of configuration management and remote execution. Remote execution is the concept of like being able to do DSH, basically, or something like that. And just push something, but it's not uh, a state thing that you keep in configuration management. And um, I th we're planning to use it for that, for the remote execution part, because the other alternative is M Collective, for example. Uh, Puppet. Puppet has this thing on M Collective, and there are other similar things. Um, Salt Stack is written in Python and it looks quite good, but I haven't tried it yet. And uh, the problem is that if you try to use the configuration management capabilities, then you lose all, you have to rewrite everything basically, that you have in Puppet. Apparently there's somebody yeah. who wants to ask questions. Asking to ask questions is not the most efficient way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's also a URL for this Ansible thing, um, ansible.github.com. So, okay. Um, we're talking about our setups, problems, solutions, and so on. Feel free to join if you want. Anything else? Should we wait for Lucy's? Should we wait for Lucy's to ask? For the benefit of the people who watch this later, That's are there any project-wide plans yeah. to in integrate configuration management into packaging? For example, I think that it would be very useful if certain packages provided obvious lenses to make it possible to automate the configuration. That could be useful, I guess. That could be useful, yes. Um, um, I, I'm not aware of any project-wide plans. I don't think there are any, but... I don't think so either. Well, apart from what's in Augios itself, but... Yeah. Um, there is this, this config model thing that the other guy has been working on. What's his name again? Um, um, maybe it would be useful to, to see what we can... I'm not sure if um, it would be better to provide them in their packages themselves or to put them into the core OGS package. That would be an interesting divide, maybe. Because OGS is currently trying to, is, is working like having a single tree of multiple lenses yeah, and enough. tries to do everything. Uh, but yeah, that would be very, very useful. Uh, I think that there's no project-wide plan as far, as far as I know, but the only way for it to happen is someone start opening bad reports. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it could be useful to, to have some, some organized work on that area. Um, but on the other hand, I think with the config model stuff, there already is organized work in, um, structured configuration file modifi modification slash parsing. So, so what uh, could be useful is, is some puppet way of using the config model data and then focusing more on the config model thing because that's already going and, and seems to have quite some, 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 some. I haven't looked much at config model uh, other than the, some blog posts I've read on Planet. Um, if it's mature enough and it supports all of things, then maybe we should focus instead of integrating into puppet instead of OGS. OGS is not very pleasant to work with anyway, so um, right. maybe the solution is some kind of interface between the two. So I don't know if it's on the copy document, but you mentioned some kind of Puppet module repository. Is there also some kind of package manager? 
Um, so there are multiple repositories of Puppet modules. There is Puppet Forge. There's another uh, repository that uh, the Rise Up folks have made. Uh, Micah is involved in that as well. Um, uh, but I think the um, upstream is trying to create one. I think they're deprecating Puppet Forge, which was the, their own, and they'll have um, some Puppet module thing, let me find it, which uses a canonical location to, to pull stuff. Let me find it. I think the forge.puppetlab.com is the old one, I think. So there's another question on IRC, whether um, Debian actually uses configuration management. The answer to that is yes. Um, we have Puppet server. Is there something Puppet Debian org, or I'm not sure? Uh, the puppetry is a mirror of the, of the Git uh, puppetry is on Git Debian org. Right, yeah. Anyone can clone it, see and, what we're doing, um, right. and provide patches as well from the main Right, list. that's what I thought. Puppet module stuff. So there was a Puppet module tool which was merged as a Puppet face on 2712, Puppet 2712. So with a newer Puppet, you can do Puppet dash module search, install, and so on. Apparently. Fair enough. Puppet space module. And I'm not sure where it's find its modules, but it does. So it searches for the okay. I, I've never used it myself. I've just seen some modules and possibly the question is also if it supports Debian. If it's what? It supports Debian. And its file layout. I would expect it to uh, or Ubuntu. I expect various stuff. <laughs> okay. Anything else? So, should we close here? Okay. Thanks, everyone, and thanks to the people joining us remotely. Another question. Um, mostly scalability issues, I'd say. The question is, what are the problems faced by Debian sysadmins when using Puppet? Uh, I'd say mostly scalability issues, and the other like, problem is Puppet's weird syntax, configuration syntax thing. So it, it, takes a, it takes a while for you to get into the Puppet mindset. And try to um, create stanzas that are meant to be like what needs to be in a machine rather than what to do. So. One more thing. Um, there's some, uh, well, recommendation that you use multiple branches and, and for, for one for testing and one for production and stuff. Is this something people actually do? Or is it, I mean, I do have a, a branch and a virtual machine that is used for testing, but I don't usually use that. Usually it goes on the live production immediately, unless it's something really, that's really changing uh, a lot of my, my infrastructure. But do, do you actually use that or are you? So the, there's a thing called environments in Puppet. Yeah, which yeah has, that's what I mean. Which has some problems in its implementation. One of them is that it doesn't work if you don't use modules. It doesn't work properly. Kind of works, but has multiple bugs that are known by upstream and upstream says just switch to modules already. Um, if you use modules, then it works. I've tried it. Um, I know that uh, also some other people have, um, are using it, like Ross Solberry. Um, and I know that 
people do something else which is really cool, that they have some post-merge hooks that map each Git branch into an environment. So you basically can uh, create a new branch, do some work, push it, and then have it as a different environment so you can test on one or two or whatever clients you want. And if it works, then merge it into master. This is an interesting way to work, uh, I think, because it's basically um, feature branches for infrastructure. Uh, we don't use the Wikimedia because Wikimedia doesn't have modules yet, unfortunately. Uh, in in uh, DSA, we have a staging branch. Does that work well? Hmm? Does that work well for DSA? Yeah. Okay. So you can actually select it on the client on each run? Right. You can set puppet uh, D or agent, whatever you want to call it, dash dash environment, okay. whatever. There is some weird interaction with um, external resources. They're being tagged differently in the database. So there is another field that indicates the environment, but then if you are realizing external resources from somewhere else, and it's not in the proper environment, you will get nothing. So it might destroy your Nigeus configuration, for example. Okay, thank you all.